Yeah. When's the next break? I don't know. Fall break, I guess. Fall break. Fall break. But anyway, how many of you have ever been to downtown Greenville? You've ever seen the falls? Absolutely amazing, right? How many of y'all love like downtown Greenville? Like go down there. Oh yeah. So, every once in a while, Chrissy and I will take the girls and we'll go to downtown Greenville, take them down to the falls, they like to see the ducks, and say, quack, quack, quack. And they like to see the dogs that are roaming around. We even like to stop right there where they have the ice skating ring right there at the hotel, you know what I'm talking about? And now there's like a grassy little area, kind of like AstroTurf right there. We let them just kick the ball around, get all their energy out, right? They get extremely hot. I get extremely hot after pushing them or one of them wants to ride on my shoulders. So afterwards, we've got to do what? Those of you who might follow me on Instagram or Snapchat or something, got to get something sweet, right? Some of you are like, you got to get some Starbucks, you got to get something. How many of you get spill the beans? A couple of people. How many of you would get Starbucks? How many of you would get the cream shack with the rolled ice cream? Ooh, Allison. How many of you have never had it? What is going on? You best be getting going. We need to take a field trip to the cream shack. Amen. Anyway. But what we decided to do, not go to the cream shack, not going to spill the beans, not going to milkshake at Mark's, we decided to stop at the Marble Slab. How many of you like Marble Slab? No, I do. Oh. He always says it's free. You get as many toppings as you want. Like, it's not free. I'm paying for it. Right? Well, we decided to get Brooklyn and ice cream. We jump in line. We normally tell people, like, go ahead of us because she can't make up her mind because there's so many choices, right? And she always mixes these two flavors, they don't mix them together because that would taste really gross. But she likes cotton candy and mint. You can't mix those together, right? So she tells me she wants two different flavors and she's my girl, so most of the time she's going to get what she wants, right? So I'm like, how do you want it? You want it in a cup? Waffle cone? Like, how do you want it? And we'd already let this one lady go in front of us. So how do you want it? She's like, I want it in a waffle cone. Not just any waffle cone. I want one with the pink sprinkles that go all the way around the waffle cone. So here I am, she wants two different ice creams. She wants a waffle cone with sprinkles all the way around it. Some of you are thinking, Dad, you better ante up, right? It's probably $10 ice cream. It was kind of, it's going to be expensive, right? So I'm going to pay for her ice cream, and the employee says, hey, the lady in front of you paid for her ice cream. Could she get mine too? <laughs> <laughs> paid for her ice cream. It's like, Brooklyn, what did you do? Did you like wink at her? Did you like Brooklyn didn't do anything. Do anything. I don't know, but maybe she looks cute. I mean, I'd, I'd buy her ice cream. Right <laughs> but I was like, why in the world would someone do that? That's probably one of the nicest things that anybody's ever done. And how many of you have ever had someone do something extremely nice for you? That was random, like it was a surprise. Guys, I'm here to tell you tonight. No matter how nice that someone might be to you, one person has been the nicest thing in the world to us. You know the answer, right? Who's the nicest person in the world? Jesus, right? Jesus. This is what I believe with all my heart. We're in this series called No 
cowards allow. This is what I believe. You ready? You write this statement down. The greater our comprehension of what God has done for us, the greater our commitment will be. Now, that was long. Some of you are like, I just got to go on three days of school. My school is so long today. The greater our comprehension of what God has done for us, the greater our commitment will be. I really believe when we look at the cross and we get a greater understanding and a greater comprehension of what God has actually done for us, we'll be sold out like never before. Have we forgotten all that God has gone through for us? All that he's done for us? Because when we make a little deal out of what he's done for us, we'll make a little deal out of it. But when we make a big deal out of what he's done for us, we'll make a big deal out of him every single day. Do you realize what he's done for you? Have you forgotten? Have you taken it for granted? I love what one person said. I'm going to read it. Because I would butcher it if I didn't read it. He said, what could Jesus do more than to die for us? What can we do less than to live for him? You cannot fathom all the good which he has bestowed upon you nor all the evil which he has forgiven you. He's been so good to you and he's forgiven you. And when we begin to think of all that he's done for us, I guarantee you, we won't be a coward. I guarantee you, we will be brave. I guarantee you, we will be courageous. Like, he did what for me? He died for me when all his friends, his closest friends, abandoned him. He took the nails for me, the crown of thorns for me. He got his beard ripped out for me. He got mocked. He got spit on. He got whipped. He did all that for me. And here I am just chilling. I went to school today and I didn't even say anything about Jesus. I had to see you at the pool this morning and I couldn't even pray to him. I had the awesome opportunity to witness you at the pool today, but one of my biggest burdens and one of the biggest things that I want to see one day is when people circle around a flagpole and they begin to pray that no one squeezes the hand to the left or right of them saying, hey, pass, I don't want to pray. I can't wait for the day I believe it could happen next year to see you at the poll. We got a circle of students who gather around the flagpole and they say, man, I want to pray. I want to pray because I realize all that God has done for me, man. I want to pray. No one will be as good to you as God has been to you. You ever realize that? That lady was pretty good to Brooklyn, but no one will ever be as good to you as God has been to you. How are you tonight living in light of all he's done for you? Turn with me if you have your Bibles. Turn with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Say, I got it, and you got it. You got it, brother. You got it. You need to get it a little bit longer. Remember, if you don't have a copy of God's Word, get one free on us. In the great room. We love giving away Bibles. How many of you can see it on the screen? Say you got it if you can see it. Alright, half of us. Still some people are still flipping. Use the table of contents if you have to. I do not care. It's after Genesis before Revelation. <laughs> Joke will always be good. Get closer. It's after Matthew. Before Hebrews. Get closer. 
Romans chapter 12, are y'all ready? No. Who wrote Romans? Oh, man, scholars, you're right. Paul. Paul. Did Paul have one of the best experiences of all time? Before Christ, maybe not. After Christ, yes, right? Here's someone who has had his life radically changed by God. And he's about to encourage you guys with something. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, I urge you. I plead with you. I beg you. Brothers, in view of God's mercy, in view of God's mercy, all he's done for you, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good pleasing and perfect will. Therefore, I urge you, I encourage you, I plead with you, I beg you, like he's literally like, guys, I beg you, I plead with you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, aka mercies. See, there's one thing, because some of y'all are hearing, like, don't conform, offer your bodies. Here's the main ingredient. You have to have this right perspective. You ready for it? In view of his mercy for you. Y'all know what mercy is? Not getting what you deserve. If someone had mercy on you, you did not get what you deserve, right? If you got in trouble at the house, and you know you're supposed to be grounded, and your parents are like, oh, you didn't pass this time. Some of you are like, that never happened. Yeah. All right? But in view of you not getting what you deserve, because what did we deserve? What do we deserve? We deserve hell. Right? In view of that, not getting what we deserve, it says, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. In view of his mercy. Some of you have friends who are viewing God in view of God's anger. Whoa, I don't read that. In view of God's mercy. Even in Romans chapter 2, it says, it's his goodness that leads us to repentance. When we realize all that he's done for us in view of his mercy, write this down. People change when they realize how good God has been to them, despite how bad they've been to them. Say it again. People change when they realize how good God has been to them, despite how bad they've been to them. In view of his mercy, like I didn't get what I deserved. Like, that's how good he's been to me, despite how bad I've been to him. Listen, I was horrible, like, I was the worst of sinners, and he did the greatest thing on the face of the planet for me, and sending his only son to die on the cross for me. When I realize how good he is to me, I'll offer my body as a living sacrifice. He wants you guys to see him in view of his mercy for you. Some of you have your phones. Some of y'all know who read the Bible, who've grown up in church. His mercies are new every morning, right? I did this today. Go to your calculators if you have a phone. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to put in your age right there in the calculator. And I want you to times that by 365. 
What you got, Cody? Let me see. Here's a big number for you. Here's a big number for you. I could get Billy's number to be even bigger here in a second. All right. Here's Cody's number for you. 4,745. Might be spawning this text. AKA okay, snap. 4,745. His mercies are new every single morning. He's had mercy on you 4,745 days, and he's going to have mercy on you another 4,745 days as long as you're alive, Cody. He's going to say, you know what? You're not going to get what you deserve. I'm going to have mercy on you. That's how good I am to you, Cody. And some of you will have a greater comprehension, and you'll have a greater appreciation for God and the cross. For those who've been walking with him a little bit longer, you're like, holy cow. He's had that many mercies on me? I timed mine by 30 today, and I was like, whoa. God, chill out. You're too good to me. But I want y'all to get it because some of y'all don't get it. When you wake up tomorrow, his mercies are going to be new. Because sometimes, man, I deserve a whole lot worse. But he gives me this mercy that's so unbelievable. Our lives should be in response to who God is and what he's done for us. That's why we encourage you guys to dig in the word. Because when you dig in the word, you get a greater understanding of who God is. And you're just like, man, I'm in love with this guy. Who would do such a thing? Who would be that crazy about someone? God's like, I will. Paul's saying, man, I beg you, in view of his mercies for you, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to him. Let me give you a little illustration. You ready for this? In church one day, the offering plate came to a little girl at the end of the row. She took the plate Put it down. What do you think she did with it? She stood in it. I'm not going to stand. I'm going to break it. She stood in it. The usher asked her, what are you doing? She said, I learned in church today to give my life to God. That was her offering. So to offer my body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Is that what we do? Are we like, okay, God, you can have half of me. I'm not going to offer my whole body, and I'll give you half of my time. I couldn't wake up this morning. God, that was just too early. You know what I want to see? I want to see see the whole half of once a week. I think the enemy loves it when you guys just do it once a year. What would happen in the life of your school if you decided to do it once a week? What if you decided to do it every day? Some of you are like, whoa, 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 you're getting too serious. You're getting too spiritual. What has God done for you? In view of his mercy, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to him. Listen, guys, salvation is God's gift to us. Your life is your gift to God. It's free. Salvation is God's gift to you. Your life is God's gift. Or your life is your gift to God. It is. Really believe when you realize who God is, there's nothing you won't do for him. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Goes on to say, do not conform any longer to the patterns, to the pattern of this world. 
Don't conform. How can I not conform? Like, God's telling me, don't do something. You want to know why it's a lot easier not to conform? Because when you realize what he's done for you. So, God, for every single one of your sins, died for him. Literally went through the most gruesome death. So why in the world would I ever want to think about playing this sin? Think about it for a second. In view of his mercy, in view of what he's done for you, why in the world would you want to play for sin? It's the very thing that he died for. It's the very thing that he gave his life for. So why in the world would we want to conform to sin? Why would we want to conform to the world? Wouldn't that just be a slap in somebody's face, wouldn't you think? I think so. Hey, God, thanks for dying for my sins. I appreciate it. Hey, but I'm going to live on life, and I'm going to follow the world. No, he says, don't conform. And Paul's saying, don't conform because I just told you, hey, I'm pleading with you. I'm begging with you. Hey, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, listen, when we're busy, Following Jesus, it's hard to be busy conforming to the world. If we occupied ourselves with offering our bodies as living sacrifice to Jesus, we wouldn't conform to the world. Well, let me ask you, when it comes to social media, where have you been conforming? Where have you been like the world? If I were to pull up your Instagram account, but I said, man, that's just like the world. But I said, man, that's someone right there that's offering their bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. What would I see? What would God see? You're not here to please me. You're here to please God. But what would I see? Hey, if I hung out with you on the weekend. Would I see somebody that's conforming, who wants to fit in with the world? Guys, you weren't meant to blend in. You were meant to stand out. No cowards allowed. You were not meant to blend in. You were meant to stand out. He wants you to stand out. He wants you to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice to him. Don't conform to the world. No matter what they're telling you, don't conform at all. Because if we're going to make a difference, we've got to be different. If we're going to make a difference, we've got to be different. We've got to go against the flow. Guys, I'm not telling you following Jesus is going to be easy. I'm telling you it's going to be worth it. When someone dies for something, it's pretty serious, right? They know how much it can truly destroy your life and tear you apart. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. You don't have to do what everyone else is doing. You know, some of you think so, but you don't. This is what happens. This is the beautiful thing that happens. When you don't conform to the world, but you allow... Yourself to be transformed by the renewing of your mind with God's word. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. You'll be able to discover what God's will is for your life when you're offering yourself to God and you're not conforming to the world. See, some of you don't know God's will for your life because you will open up the word of God. Guarantee you start to discover God's will for your life when you start opening up the Word of God in your life. But here's the thing about God's will. This is what I love about it. It's good, pleasing, and it's what? You know what that tells me? God wants what's best for you. <coughs> the enemy wants what's worse for you. God's will is good. It's pleasing. It's perfect. It's the best. What would happen if we started offering our bodies as living sacrifices 
started off from these living sacrifices. We didn't conform. We stood out. We didn't blend in. We did things like we saw today and see you at the pole. Man, what would happen? Because I guarantee you conversations happen. How many con had a conversation and someone asked you, hey, what in the world were you doing around the flag pole? Anybody ask you that? Nobody got asked that? Somebody like, I did, but I don't want to share it. Because <coughs> I easily could say, hey, can one of you come up here and pray for me? Maybe a handful of you say, hey, I'll do it. What if y'all fought over the mic? What if y'all fought over the mic? <coughs> you're not talking to your friends, you're talking to God when you pray. You realize that? Have you, we're in week three, no coward to love. Have you made a step of courage, a step of boldness? Have you offered your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to him? Where are you conforming in your life? Where are you doing what everybody else is doing when he's telling you, hey, don't conform. In view of my mercy for you, in view of everything that I've done for you, Offer your bodies as living sacrifices to me. Maybe you're here tonight and you had no clue that someone would love you enough to die for you. Today, how you need to offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing, is by surrendering your life. Say, God, I'm yours. But may you stand boldly and say, you know what, I'm not going to conform. I'm going to continue to offer my body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And I really believe it will change the face of this planet, Jesus. Continue, guys. To be bold, our courage is seen, not hidden. We can be strong and courageous knowing the Lord our God will go with us wherever we go. Let's pray. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Maybe you're here tonight. And you say, you know what? I have no clue all that God has done for me. And I know I need a relationship with Jesus. Never given your life to Jesus before. You've never surrendered your life to Him. I would love to pray for you tonight. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Maybe you're here tonight. You say, you know what? I don't know where I'd spend eternity. I don't know if I have a relationship with Jesus, and I want to nail that down tonight. Heads bowed and eyes closed. If that's you, if you just slip your hand up and sit right back down, I'll pray for you. Anybody tonight? Anybody? No? Need a relationship with Jesus? Don't want to miss a hand. Maybe you're here. You haven't been offering your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to Him. You've forgotten what God has done for you, how good He's been to you. You know there's a step of courage you need to make to not conform, to not be like your friends, to maybe not have, be in that relationship that you're in, to say no in a certain area that you know God's telling you to say no in. You just want me to pray for it. If you can slip your hand up, it's the right back there. See this hand to see. God, tonight I pray for these students. Maybe they're in an area where they're conforming to this world. They're trying to be just like the world. God, I pray that you would give them the courage to run away from that situation. In view of your mercy for them. God, maybe tonight we just need to come up and say, God, I need your forgiveness. God, but I pray these students would take steps of courage and boldness. They would realize that they have students all around them who are hurting, who are like a sheep without a shepherd. They don't know Jesus. God, I pray that they would have conversations. They would hand out invites. They would be strong and courageous. 
God, I thank you for what you're going to do through the life of these kids. For all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Maybe you're here tonight. You just need someone to pray with. Man, you might need to go to the green room. Maybe you still need to give your life to Jesus. Make your way to the green room. But I want to invite you to respond when the Lord leads you to respond. Let's stand and sing.